And here we go. Going to talk about authority marketing online, how to build yourself as an authority, uh, especially using FAQ videos. But we'll kind of tap into the whole authority concept on a little bit broader level as well. Uh, so what is authority marketing? I had to grab this headline from the Huffington Post, and I suggest you Google uh, authority marketing sometime. But talking about, uh, and there's so many sites on authority marketing now, how do you become an authority? Because what people want is information. They want expert advice. They don't want ads. Uh, uh, they don't want to be a lead. They want to talk to an expert. How do you become an expert and have everybody... Uh, seeking your advice. That's the whole idea. So this is probably one of my favorite stories, uh, uh, hands down in the whole internet marketing case study world. Uh, go back to 2007, and there was this little company in Richmond, Virginia, called River Pools and Spas, and they were killing it. They were number five in the Richmond marketplace. They had a massive waiting list. They had, I think it was like 18 employees. Life was good. And now fast forward to 2008 and they're the only people. And I really mean probably the only people that are suffering more than, than people in the real estate mortgage biz. They're dying. In fact, they're pretty much dead. Uh, they've got no employees. They've got no business. One of the two partners has taken a full-time job elsewhere to try and pay the bills and keep the company alive. So, so <laughs> now you've got this company that's literally death rattled, brink of, of destruction. And the one business partner is sitting around at home and uh, doesn't really know what to do. He's waiting for the phone ring, please ring, please ring, please ring. And, and uh, gets an idea, I know, I'll, I'll take my laptop and I'll take my little laptop and I'll wander out to uh, uh, the backyard, and he sits down at, at the uh, patio table, just a basic backyard, basic patio table, and starts to record FAQ videos. What is the difference between bromine and chlorine? How can I fix algae, blah, blah, blah? What's the best way to? How to save money? And every question that he could think of, he starts to record answers. And you have to go on the website, and you have to check it out, and especially look at the old videos and what you'll realize Let's just jump over there and show you. Uh, uh, this is not a fancy marketing website. <laughs> this, this is the internet's equivalent of uh, gold shag carpeting. This is, this is, I know there was no internet in the 80s, but this is the most 80s website I've definitely ever seen. But as you can see, they put in a lot of pools in their marketplace. In fact, by 2012, with about 200 videos up on their website answering every question you can imagine. Not only had they made a comeback, but River Pools and Spas had become the number one in-ground fiberglass pool and spa retailer in the entire nation. And riverpoolsandspas.com, this website, is the number one pool-related website in the world. Go do pool searches. You will show up at the site over and over and over these guys are rulers of the universe because they became the leading authority in their space by answering every question imaginable. If you've got questions, this is where you're gonna get sent to. And why does that work like that? You see, Google's stated purpose in life is to organize the world's information. And they measure their success on what they call the long click, meaning I do a search, I want left-handed widgets, and I look at the search rooms and results page, and I see something and I click on it. If I stay gone and, and appear to have found what I'm looking for, then Google says, oh, that, that's our, our search. You found what you wanted, success. But if you go and you come back and you go out and you come back, because we keep finding stuff that's not really what we want, then, then Google, says, you know, uh, maybe you're not such an authority. So in order to keep us from manipulating Google, what they did is they created some really intelligent algorithm uh, based on a mathematical uh, uh, school of study called probabilistic latent semantic indexing. Really nerdy, I know. But uh, essentially, if the word I'm trying to rank for is fiberglass pool, Google says, okay, what is the statistical probability that every other word in the English language 
show up in the same sentence or title with fiberglass pool or in the same paragraph or on the same page and the more of those every word in the entire english language well the more of those words you have present the higher score you will have for that word because you're covering all okay. of the related things if it's really an authoritative website if it's really worth ranking and sending people to it's not going to have lots and lots of backlinks or whatever some SEO person might have told you. It's going to have lots of related content. Fiberglass pool, fiberglass spas, uh, in-ground pools, bromine, chlorine, filters, pumps, heaters, solar, backyard, all those words occur very commonly around fiberglass pool. So the more words that are semantically related to fiberglass pool, I have the more authoritative Google's going to believe my site is. So when I go out and I answer all the questions about a topic in a content silo, when I pick a niche, fiberglass pools and spas, and I say that's my niche, and I create lots of content all around it, then I can become an authority. And if I create lots and lots and lots of content and it happens to be video, because video content is 53 times more likely to be found than text content, now all of a sudden I am, uh, I, I am the authority. I am the authority. By the way, if we go into uh, you know fiberglass pool, installation process, whatever, navigate through this website and you'll see it's all just very basic stuff with a whole bunch of little videos. And yeah, they got fancy later on and started shooting them on site and, and adding in a, a, an intro stinger and things like that. But the majority in the beginning were just sitting at his laptop in his backyard. Can't believe they still advertise DVDs. Um, <laughs> I'm sure some people still use DVDs. Um, uh, uh, this, this is it. This is it. Lots and lots and lots of information. So does it really work? Well, first rule. First rule. If you're going to be an authority marketer, you got to be an authority. I can't be an authority on uh, um, uh, women's pumps, uh, uh, high-heeled shoes, whatever. I don't really know anything about it. You got to you got to have a niche to own. But just as a doctor, a general practitioner is the lowest earning doctor on the face of the planet, the more specialized you are, the better you can own one niche, the more valuable you are. I know a marketing professional who specialized in uh, retail store lighting. And he knew more about lighting a retail store and in caps and products than anybody on the face of the planet, that one thing. But he became an insanely highly paid and sought after expert to help all the major retailers because he knew more about lighting than anything else. Lighting in, in retail product stores, that's it. Well, that's what these guys did. They picked a niche. Not everything about swimming or pool, fiberglass pools and spas, in-ground fiberglass pools and spas, that was their niche. You need to have a niche. I'll show you an example. Uh, let's jump over here. Uh, one of my favorite searches for a good friend, Josh Metal, uh, decided his niche was going to be doing loans for doctors and that he was truly exceptional at helping doctors do loans because he had so many unique circumstances and situations, especially new residents, uh, uh, attendings, people that had a bright future, but not necessarily a bright financial past because it was nothing but uh, uh, you know, mac and cheese, uh, uh, student loans, maxing out credit cards, but hey, now I'm about to make a ton of money. Can you help me get a loan? Well, Josh was good at that. So he decides he's going to be the physician home loan guy. And sure enough, if I search for physician home loans, and by the way, I'm searching in California, but Josh is in Salt Lake City, Utah. But sure enough, here he is. He's number one. And well, gosh, how does he rank number one in all these states for everything related to, remember I said it was mostly self-employed physicians, attending physicians, residents. Well, let's just click on one of his topical areas. And he, he notice he put them in topical areas, loans for residents and fellows, loans for attendings, loans for self-employed doctors. 
so that he really owns those niches. Well, how does he own them so well? Well, look at this, FAQs. Solutions for resident physicians. How do I tell if a loan company is legit? Blah, blah, blah. Am I responsible for paying closing costs? Uh, will there be surprises at my closing? <laughs> There'll be surprises all through the process. How big of a pain in the PIA is the loan process? Uh, uh, and look at this, all the same shirt. The guy sat down and answered all these questions in one fell swoop and put them all up. And then we went ahead and picked the states where he wanted to market serving these states. And sure enough, he is the world's leading authority on Dr. Mortgages. In fact, suggestion, once you've done this, and like Josh, you got over a hundred videos, you jump out to elance.com or Upwork, I think is the new name, but Elance will get you there. Um, and you hire a ghostwriter and say, hey, I got 105 videos with all the answers around my niche topic. Will you write me a book? And you'll be surprised how cheaply somebody will write you a book. And then all you have to do is go back and forth with them, get them to edit a little bit, great, thanks, take it, and do your final edits on it. And then go have that published at Amazon. You can also get that done through Elance very, very cheaply. And all of a sudden you're a published author. And yes, Josh is a published author with uh, uh, Why Physician Home Loans Fail. And you can go find it on Amazon today. Uh, last I heard, he was uh, north, just north of 100 loans a month. Uh, and yes, now there is a physician's real estate working with them and other physicians, financial organizations that have teamed up with them because he really is an expert at that niche. So you got to find a niche and then you got to say, all right, I'm going to pick a niche and I'm going to go out and I'm going to dominate that niche. And I'm going to do it by starting with FAQ videos. And the reason we like to start with FAQ videos, because that's what everybody goes to the web for. If my kids have a question today, I rarely will even attempt to answer it. I don't know. Go ask Google. Google knows everything and Google knows everything. If you want to know what kind of questions people are asking, let's say um, my topic is um, uh, waterfront properties. Uh, and I want to know, and sure enough, Google see they're suggesting what things people search for. Well, if I were to proceed this search term, waterfront properties, with any of the how words, who, what, why, if, should, could, when. Those are all the question indicator words. So let me just say how waterfront properties. Uh, whoops. Nothing starts with how. How about uh, <laughs> what? Maybe I picked a wrong one. Lake Whatcom waterfront properties. Uh, what waterfront properties? Uh, if well, maybe waterfront properties isn't a real searched one. <laughs> All right, this one's good. How about um, first time? I guess there's not a lot of waterfront properties in Arizona, and Google knows where you are. Um, uh, so let's just say what first time home buyers. And here we go. What first time home buyers want? What first time home buyers should know? What first time home buyers programs are available? See, Google, what first time home buyers need to know. They're taking, anytime you're typing, they're taking whatever you're typing and saying, when people type that in the past, what did they continue to type? Or what was the whole phrase most frequently? So they're, it's called Google Suggest. They're suggesting things. And Google's telling you right here what the most searched for phrases are around your topic. So that's how you can find out what questions are being asked. So I'll give you a shortcut. Here's your first tip. S G, the letters S G dot Serpstat, S E R P S T A T. S G dot Serpstat. Uh, uh, sorry, I've got a question over here. Bill, what was the name of the website for writing the book? Uh, there's a lot of them up there, but my personal favorite is Elance, E-L-A-N-C-E uh, dot com and go up there and search for Ghostwriter and you'll find thousands of people. You write up your gig. Uh, uh, look, I have all these videos. I have all this information. I want somebody to take all this and turn it into a book 
and then you'll get bids back from people and you can dialogue back and forth and you can see their reviews and you can see samples of their work. And when you find one you like, you uh, uh, award the gig to them uh, and put the money up in escrow and it doesn't get released from escrow until you're happy with the product you've got. It's a great, great way to outsource work. Um, uh, Odesk and Elance have now combined and are renaming themselves as Upwork. So that's, that's why all the different names, but yeah, you can go to odesk.com or elance.com. There you go. Answer to the question. Now let's get back to sg.serpstat. So now I want to, uh, um, uh, do the first time home buyer thing again, like we were just doing first time home buyer enter. See, SERP stat, a SERP is a search engine results page. When you search something, that's what Google gives you. Uh, would you like to share this? No, I don't have any friends. Oh, <laughs> that's good marketing right there. I'm going to make you click something you don't want to click. Um, uh, uh, search engine results page, stat, statistics, and sg.serpstat. SG is short for Google Suggest. So here are my Google suggestions. And what Serpstat has done here is gone out and, and collected everything that Google ever suggests related to or containing first time home buyer. So now I'm able to scroll down and say, this, this is all the stuff that people are searching for. Uh, and I think there's a hundred on a page. Uh, 50 on a page and you can see I've got pages and pages and pages first time home buyer grant Philadelphia first time home buyer grant PA first PNC first time home buyer grant Provo first time home buyer grant these are uh, grant can you see a trend here lots of grant searches and look at this I'm still going seven pages uh, oh my gosh nine pages uh, 11 pages uh, man people are searching for first time home buyer stuff like crazy you don't want to answer all of these or talk about all of these, but if I took first time home buyer bank loans, you see, that's a long tail, a long phrase, five words or more is kind of what you're looking for. If I go and I create a video and I title it with first time home buyer bank loans, and I can put something before it or something after it, but I want that phrase in there exactly. And I'm going to, record the answer to that on a video or, or turn that into a question. Um, what are the best first time home buyer bank loans? Uh, uh, um, uh, secrets, uh, secret trick to first time home buyer, whatever. I'm going to make a title out of that or a question. And yeah, it doesn't have to be FAQ, always questions. It can be tips, information, knowledge, tidbits, whatever you want to call it. But if I use that exact phrase and work that into my title, name of my video, title of my video, in the description of my video. Uh, odds of me ranking for that are exceptionally high. But now if I've picked a topical area like first time home buyer, and now I have, I don't know, let's say you spend an hour. I find that in an hour you can probably answer about 15 questions, 10 your first time because you're really slow and long-winded and you keep wanting to get it right. And by the way, that's the biggest mistake you can make is trying to sound too professional and articulate and never ever fumble your words. People like to talk to real people, real words, lean in, gyrate, gesture with your hands, use props and talk to people, connect with them, make eye contact with the camera. That's what they want. And if you have a lot of ums and ahs, whatever. If people like you in real life, they'll like you on video. So just answer the question like you're talking to one person, not to an audience, not to a camera. You're just saying, you know, when it comes to first time home buyer grants, there's a lot of great opportunities out there. Now I just want to warn you and be perfectly honest. They can be so much work that oftentimes they're really not worth it. So the real key is understanding exactly what's available and what hoops you're going to have to jump through before you, but and it's seek connect with them, talk to them. <clears throat> now, let me show you another trick with sg.serpstat. Look at this. I wanted to start with first time home buyer. I want to say first time home buyer with grant, with assistance, with county, with down, with 
loan. And it's showing me all the words that show up most frequently with first time home buyer. Awesome to be able to really get my niche. But let's say only questions. And now it's only gonna show me, like I said, things that have the question indicators, who, what, why, wow, if, should, when, uh, uh, where to apply for first time home buyer grant, how first time home buyer works UK, uh, how first time home buyer, uh, how first time home buyer works, uh, how to apply for first time home buyer assistance, whatever. And we'll scroll down and look at that. There are two pages. And these are big pages, by the way. Let's just see. That's about 10. Looks like about 15. So that's about 30, about 45. Yeah, it's looking at me like there's at least 60 uh, uh, on here. So questions that start with first questions about first time home buyer. This would be a golden niche. And if all I did is I went through here and I started at the top, and I answered every one of these questions. Now I might tweak the question a little, I might add something, uh, uh, but I'm really trying to get that phrase in there as exact as possible. Uh, add something afterwards before. Remember, people don't always type things just right. I might uh, um, uh, title it with something like, who is a first time home buyer? Uh, uh, is one of the most commonly asked questions on Google. Uh, uh, here's my best answer, whatever. I'm gonna try and use this phrase some way as much as I can. If I could go through and do these 50 or 60 or 70 or 150 videos, by the time I had those all up, if I did it correctly, and I really was giving valuable information, legitimate answers, because remember, at least 10 people a month, at least 10 people a month are typing this question in, or it wouldn't show up as a suggestion and probably a lot more than that. Well, if people are going out there with that question and you're providing those answers and you've got all those related, semantically related answers in your content silo, uh, pretty hard for you not to be the world's leading authority on this topic. It's really hard. And if you don't really like that topic, well then skip questions and come down here and say programs. And yes, I'm going to cover and review all the first time homebuyer programs or the no down payment programs, or uh, first time home buyer programs in Texas, uh, or qualifications, or first time home buyer with first hyphen time, uh, or home buyer as a single word instead of two words, or whatever, but you can pick any sort of topic, bring it over here, and find out how much search traffic there is, but more importantly, you're gonna learn exactly what phrases to put in your video titles or to put into your answers or your knowledge nuggets. Now, this is not the exact traffic. It's not in any order. I wanna give that caveat. First time home buyer program 20 programs 2015. I don't know if that one gets more searches than zero down first time home buyer programs Canada does. This is just telling me what Google suggests. If you really wanna get nerdy, I'll take a 23 second detour here and say you go to adwords.google.com. As long as you're signed into your Google account or you'll have to sign in if you're not, then you can go to tools. And when you click on tools, you're gonna see keyword planner. See that keyword planner? When you kick, click on keyword planner, you'll be able to search for keyword ideas. So look, I put in homes for sale, listings, new listings, first time home buyer, real estate agent, just pick random stuff to give you an example. Well, now Google's gonna go out and find everything related to those topics, break them into categories, MLS listings, uh, uh, agent real, uh, and it's showing me all the stuff that contains those two words. There's 38 searches that contain those two words. There's eight searches that contain MLS listings. There are 51,330 searches on average per month for things that contain MLS listings. If I wanna see the specific search phrases, there they are. And what I can see is MLS real estate listings only gets 720 searches a month, but MLS listings gets 49,500. 
well, now I can come over here and I can type in my, here, let's just delete some of these. Boom. And let's get rid of real estate agent. Delete, enter. Let Google do its little thing. And it's going to go out and find me all of the first time home buyer related searches by traffic counts. And I can actually see the traffic counts uh, uh, by keyword. And it's really having to work hard right now. Normally, this is a fairly quick thing. Um, so I'm going to cheat and just go down here because I still have first time home buyer up. There we go. First time home buyer credit, 1300 searches. If you don't have a hundred searches a month, you're probably not real excited about ranking for it. But don't worry about the individual search phrases. As long as you have a topical area and you really just want to become the authority for that topical area, try to hit every question, every phrase you can. They'll all aggregate and build up into a, a bigger amount of overall traffic. But if you do want to go see exact counts, and by the way, that's an ad group. I don't have to do it in ad groups. I can actually just sort everything related to first time home buyer uh, and see all the words. And I can even sort it by search traffic and see of all the first time home buyer searches, what is the average amount of traffic? And by the way, suggested bid for those people buying Google AdWords, this is what they're suggesting or about the average amount that people are paying on a cost per click. So that'll tell me which ones tend to convert the best. And look, $15.26, $16.81, first time home buyer loan. Somebody's paying $16.81 just for the click on an ad, whether I ever do anything, whether I bounce off the website, whatever. It's valuable enough for me to pay $16.81 or $19.25 for first time home buyer mortgage. Uh, uh, $16.55 for first time home buyer guide. Uh, dang, that must be some valuable stuff. So there's your Google AdWords or AdWords.Google. Uh, uh, quick lesson. There's your example of uh, uh, authority marketing done correctly by Mr. Metal. The one thing I do want to see here is I want to see full explanations uh, uh, below this. I want the title. I want my titles to be a little bigger than Josh's. I want them to include the keywords, uh, mortgage, whatnot, uh, so that I can uh, or will rank uh, for those keywords. And I'll give you a couple other little ranking tips that will help you rank much more quickly. But sg.surfstat is where you're going to go find all your topics to record about all your videos. If you can't find topics around something like, uh, uh, what was it? Waterfront um, uh, properties. Come on. And there we go. Uh, so there we go. There's all of the suggestions for waterfront properties. And it looks to me like they're all just location based. Uh, the only thing people really want to know uh, is show me waterfront properties in Wisconsin Dells or Wisconsin or Michigan or whatever. Uh, but this is how I'm going to go judge. Uh, and let's just say waterfront. Delete. Enter and let it come up with waterfront. And if I really wanted to be a waterfront expert because I was in a community where I had lots of waterfront, I could look and see all the other words that go with it. But come into, come into SERPstat, find your area of expertise and, or, or experiment with different areas of expertise until you find one you like. So when I post this up afterwards, uh, uh, and it will be back in the archive. I will go ahead and post a link to this Word doc, but I went out and scraped this from the web. Uh, the top 100 niches uh, for realtors that realtors can focus on. So this is niches based on particular types of housing, post and beam, log, mid-century, bungalow, brownstones, oceanfront properties, uh, etc. Location-based niches, name of county, city, suburb, neighborhood, particular subdivision. I love area specialists. I love farmers. I want somebody that knows everything about this community more than anything else. Hands down my favorite. But if farming's not your thing, 
uh, niches based on types of buyers and sellers. Mm, distressed properties, investors, fixer uppers, first time, move up, 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 young and single women, young couples, growing families, empty nesters, retirees, blah, 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 downsizing, foreign investors. What about knowledge and skills that can define your niche? Uh, you know, buyer, global, international, seniors, resorts and second home, distressed property specialists. And this is all of our, our multi-letter designation stuff. Uh, um, great, great niches. If, if that's what you want to focus on. Shared hobbies and interests. I thought that's, this one was really creative. Uh, um, uh, people who love to cook, home decorating, gardening, uh, uh, lovers of dogs, cats, pets, pet rescue, do-it-yourselfers, uh, working with firemen, working with policemen, uh, working with doctors, nurses. Why won't somebody go after nurses? School teachers, got to be one of my favorites on the planet. Um, uh, big yard specialist, whatever. People love specialists. Remember the person who specializes, I'm a podiatrist that specializes in uh, uh, type two corns, bunions, whatever the hell a podiatrist would do. The whole idea is that's the person that for the person who needs it, they're going to find it. That's the specialist. I'm the guy when it comes to uh, uh, farms and ranches, uh, uh, home staging, um, uh, rentals and property management, uh, buying rental homes, uh, uh, flippers, um, your flipping expert, whatever. There we go. Um, uh, there's all of your niches. Uh, 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 and again, and by the way, you can just go out and type in real estate niches and find multiple things. Walkable communities. Oh man, that's awesome. I'd love to be the walkable community expert. So suggest you either Google it or, like I said, this video takes several hours for these to encode and upload to YouTube. But by tonight, that will be up there, and tomorrow you can download my doc. If you're in a hurry, go out to um, Google <laughs> and do a search for real estate niches. So you're going to pick a niche, and then you're going to go to SG Search Start, and you're going to search that niche. And then you're going to, when you kind of got it narrowed down, you can start copying these, cut and paste, or you can just say authorize for export and export the entire list. Once you have your niche, now what are you going to do? Well, you're going to sit down and you're going to answer every one of those questions in front of your computer. And if you have your little camera sitting there, I suggest that, and all I would do is I'd take a Word doc, I'd have the question. If there's any reminders or pointers or things I wanted, I'd go through and make my notes below it. I'd blow it up really big. Uh, uh, if I'm uh, using my phone, great. I'd have my little, you know, selfie pole mount tripod with my phone right here in front of me. Uh, or if I'm new, doing it on my laptop, I'd stack it up on a bunch of books or something to get it right at eye level because you want to make eye contact with the camera. And then I'd have my notes right below that camera right there on my screen. And all I would do is go through and start answering those questions. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to state the question and then answer the question. And then want you to keep it reasonably short and sweet. Don't go off and ramble on and on because people won't watch your whole video. But you also don't have to be exceptionally short either. If something needs a long answer, my suggestion is give them the, the, the short and sweet answer uh, uh, so what's the market doing today? Bottom line, prices are going up, rates are going up. Uh, uh, if you really want the details and you want to understand what the bond market's doing and the Fed, blah, 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 and unemployment numbers, uh, I suggest you go to my long answer down below and then give the long answer and go into the uh, consumer price index uh, impact on long-term mortgage, blah, 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 blah. That way they've got both. They can get the, the short and then the long one. And I hate to encourage, I'm not encouraging long, but just let me say that Longer videos do tend to rank better than shorter videos. Uh, there's a lot more information in it. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go back to whatever my niche is. Um, uh, let me just say Anthem uh, Real Estate. I live in a little community for a little while longer called Anthem. Uh, and let's see if my little community, it's not a city, 
uh, Anthem, Phoenix, real estate. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, there's a couple. There's not going to be a lot just around that area. But what I would do is I would go in and just search for Anthem uh, um, and see what kind of things. Anthem, Blue Cross. Okay, yeah, all right. That looks good. Let's go ahead and do that search. Um, and then I'm going to scroll through all these and find the ones that relate to Anthem. See what kind of search traffic is popping up around that topic. Take those phrases, take the things I want to rank for, write them out in my Word doc, cut and paste them, move them over, and then I'm just going to start answering those questions. So where are the best deals in Anthem, Arizona? You get asked all the time where the best deals in Anthem, Arizona are. And what I've found are that there's really three ways to define best deal. Blah, 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 blah. So again, write the question, write your notes, answer your video. And now here's the key, uh, loading a lot of new tutorials up. You can go through these later, short and sweet. But one, I wanna make sure that when you record that video, please, 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 uh, as much as it's easier to just straight upload it to YouTube, instead, I would like you to save that video on your phone or your computer first. I like to send it to my computer. I share, do email, take it on my computer and rename the video with this phrase. And when you name it, this is key, take the exact phrase. So if I wanted, um, uh, I don't know, how about home uh, buyer Yes, I type 11 words a minute. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and now show me questions with home buyer in it. Okay, who qualifies as a first time home buyer? If that was my question, I'm going to name my video, actually name the file, who underscore qualifies underscore as underscore a underscore first underscore exactly as I see this phrase with the underscores, name the file. Now that I have that file saved and named correctly with the underscores so that the name doesn't get all smashed together when Google removes all the spaces, you can use dashes if you prefer them to underscores. I'm going to take that and I'm going to upload that to my YouTube channel. When I upload that to YouTube channel, I'm now going to give it the name, that same name, or I'm going to give it and see, I'll use this exact phrase. Might not make a good question. When can I claim first time home buyer credit? I'm not sure I want to say that in the title. I tweak it slightly for the title, but in the name of the video, I'm going to use that exactly. Name it with underscores, upload it, put it up on YouTube, title it with this phrase or something very, very, very close to this phrase. And then write the description and go ahead and take your time and write a full paragraph description give some teaser, whatever, but make sure you use this phrase in the description. You want at least two sentences, let's say. And then I'm going to put my tags in there. I'm gonna add several tags, including this as a tag uh, or a couple of little keyword, home buyer credit, home buyer grant, first time home buyer, home buyer secrets. I'll put those tags, so I got title, description, tags, and again, tutorial videos for all of this either up or being uploaded, I literally have been breaking them down into little bitty short one and two minute videos to make everything really simple and digestible. So there's about 20 of them. Um, but that's it. Now that I have my video all named and whatnot, and I've put it up there and I've got the question, I want you to do one last thing on YouTube. I want you, when you go into your YouTube and you go into your creator studio or whatever, and you see your video, uh, uh, click on closed captioning. And Google has an auto. It'll pop up with auto. And again, tutorial video on this, but they'll have it auto close captioned. If you click to open it and you edit it a little bit, now it'll save it as a manual closed caption. If it's manually closed captioned, Google will go, oh, this must be right. And if they think it's right, they'll index every word in your entire video. And it is ranking solid gold. So make sure you open up every closed caption. And when you see the crazy stuff, like I said, first time home buyer, um, uh, you know, and it said, uh, fly in home fryer, uh, whatever. And it's, you'll see it it's crazy stuff by editing a couple of those. One, I'll make it more understandable Two, I'll make it more real to Google. So if I do those things, I have put up my video, I've named it, I've titled it, I've described it. I've tweaked the closed captioning at least one word. 
and and it's now public on my YouTube channel. If I now go share that on my Facebook, and if you can share it one other place, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, whatever. But if I go share, hey, check out my new video, whatever, and I link back to it, I wanna make sure that the link to my video is the title of the video or has the phrase, the text. Um, but as long as I, I do that, that's it. Most of the time you'll rank the same day you put the video up. If you pick 50 of these questions like this, you put them up, uh, and we're talking about what? Uh, maybe one day's work to do 50 of these. Probably do 100 in a day like Josh did. And that's it. You're now the world's leading authority on that topic. And once you do that for a while, now, by the way, some extra little tips uh, when it comes to, and again, go to the YouTube SEO training, but uh, throw out a couple more nuggets for you. When you put up that video and you share it on Facebook, ask everybody to check out your video. And if you can bring yourself to do it, um, ask them if, if they would to watch the whole thing. Google puts a big emphasis on whether they watch the whole thing. And, and also, uh, you would consider mm -hmm. a favor if they would uh, comment, like, or especially subscribe. When you put up a video and the first five or 10 people come and watch the video and they actually watch the whole video, don't just go, mm, nope, and click off. And then a few of them subscribe at the end, Google's going, hey, because everything's a score. Somebody comments, ooh, up goes your score. Somebody likes it, hey, up goes your score. Somebody watches it. Somebody watches the whole thing. All those things add to your score, but somebody subscribes and it's like, oh my God, this is, if you can get, a few people to watch the whole thing and subscribe out of the gate and resist the urge to go online and find some service that'll have people do that in Egypt or Bangladesh or whatever. That's, that's the wrong kind of stuff. You want real people to do this. That's why Facebook is awesome. Uh, sorry, you're, you're so solid gold. All right. A couple last tips and we'll wrap it up for the day. Um, uh, if you use Google Chrome, and everybody should use Google Chrome, uh, there is a plugin for uh, uh, Google Chrome called um, uh, YouTube Sorter. And if, if you don't know how to add extensions, uh, um, not hard. If you just type in Chrome Store, uh, what you'll see, and there I am at the web store, Google's web store. I just go in there and say, yeah, I want a uh, YouTube sorter and it's going to pop up and go, uh, YouTube, uh, sorter, um, uh, show all more extensions and it'll show up here. Um, uh, and whenever I spot YouTube sorter or sort YouTube super sorter, all these are just free plugins that you can add into Chrome to make Chrome do more stuff. And here's why you want it. If you want to know how to do it right on YouTube, you want to know who else is doing it right and learn from their experience. YouTube sorter allows me, see all these filters? You can't sort by all these things normally. Google took that away. But with YouTube sorter, I go in and I type in real estate or first time home buyer or whatever my topic is, VA mortgages, uh, helping veterans buy homes. Um, uh, I do that and then I say channel, only show me the channels. I don't wanna see the individual videos and then sort it by view count. And all of a sudden it's gonna sort all the channels related to that topic in the order of how many views they have in total for their channel. When I do that, I can now just sort through all these channels and go, oh, look, Kevin Ward with 328 videos uh, is here. And then here's uh, US HUD network. Um, I don't think that's legal. Um, <laughs> I know it's not. You're not allowed to say FHA or HUD in a, in a URL. But uh, whatever, somebody's doing it anyway. And sure enough, they've got 406 subscribers. And look at this, Christopher Chu. Um, Beverly Hills, luxury real estate homes for sale. Uh, Christopher is killing it, isn't he? 
with 6,251 subscribers. Why, why so many? Sharing, ranking, putting up interesting content, lots of visual. People love to look at expensive properties, unique properties. That's how you build authority. And look, even if I jump all the way down to page four, page 10, look at all these people. Jimmy Reed, Jimmy Reed shows you how to make money wholesaling real estate. Uh, uh, Mojo Selling Solutions, Frankly Realty. You can see everybody else's channel by using the sorter on YouTube. I'm gonna give you my favorite channel. Mike Torres turned me on to this one. Thank you, Mike Torres. Uh, Jessica Riffle Edwards. Um, this woman's awesome. I, I can't wait to meet her at the next NAR conference or whatever. Look at this. She doesn't even bother with a thumbnail. She doesn't bother to pick the frame with the good, no way. She'll just throw all the facial expressions up there. Uh, uh, even the funky hair days. Uh, throws up all of her videos. And look at this. She shoots them all in her car, uh, which I love doing that myself. I got a little suction cuppy thing up in the window. And then, hey, everybody, blah, 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 blah. I would turn her on to a quick tip that every phone has, uh, you can add modes to your camera. Add the picture in picture mode where it can take a picture facing forward and a picture facing you. And what most people don't know is it normally has you in a little postage stamp. You can make yours in a nice bubble and a lot bigger. So you've got whatever's going on out there plus you talking uh, so that it has a nice bubble around your head and doesn't show all the stuff in your car and whatnot. Um, and you can see where you're driving. Great for doing neighborhood uh, uh, videos. Anyway, go check out Jessica's stuff, but look at this, offline versus online. Uh, uh, what's hard about being a realtor? Man, she just, and by the way, you think, oh, well, that's a, no, 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 no. Let's, let's really, come on. Well, yeah, okay. Now you're starting to see this woman, she bangs them out. <laughs> yeah, load more, keep going. Uh, how's that? Um, and look at that, 90% of them are just, Every day, I, I, it has to be every day when she gets in the car. Oh, look, I got the kids with me today, uh, the dog, whatever. She's always shooting from her car. And he's, look, you want ideas? Knock, knock, who's there? Buyer again. Oh, what a great title. Uh, see, she's got a nice house. Uh, uh, what is her channel? Um, well, her channel is Jessica Riffle Edwards. Her website is the Carolinas Finest. Um, what a great case study. Uh, no fear, put it out there, answer every question, think of something. What if you just did that? What if every day as you were driving to the office, driving to the gym, doing whatever, you always had from your little SG SERP stat and your notepad, you always had one time when you get in the car and, <clears throat> and she doesn't do it, but I'd highly recommend you get a little lavalier clip on mic so you don't have all the road noise and you don't sound like you're talking on a tunnel because that's what you'll sound like if you talk to your cell phone without a, a, a clip-on microphone. Uh, and that's it. That's it. And, and, every day. Hey, all right, listen. I get hit with this question all the time. Uh, uh, if I'm buying a house, which home improvements are going to give me the biggest ROI and what things do I really want to avoid? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here's the answer. You know what? I'm going to get Bob, my contractor friend, and we're going to do a series. I'm gonna, And then later I'll go and I'll do... And I bet she's got a bunch of interview ones in here too. And you go talk to Bob and he's all right, Bob, which ones are? And um, there you go. There's your example. So Jessica Riffle Edwards. Um, what are you using for white screen behind you? <laughs> um, cool. Angela. Oh, <laughs> uh, I wish we could just do these as open where everybody would just talk and we could all hang out and brainstorm. Check this out. You're going to love this. Uh, Amazon.com or eBay, typical rate about 80 bucks. Um, how about that? Uh, it's a, a projector screen. You go buy a pure white projector screen, I leave it up, but before I shoot videos so that I don't have my whiteboard and my notes and just dirty office wall, that whole Apple look, um, that Apple look is, is just a nice way to shoot video. Look at that, we'll pull back. And there is my eight foot wide screen. And you can also see my collection of uh, mobile video phone gear over there and printers and other stuff going on. Uh, uh, but yeah, I just pull it in, frame it up and ta -da, there we go. Um, uh, now I'm shooting on a Steve Jobs style. Well, no, let's pull it down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. How about that? 
and I'm ready to go. And I just shoot everything against a projector screen. Uh, I like it better than green screen or something else. Any other questions here? Uh, oh, okay. I checked in a few kits already on Amazon. You need lights too. You don't, but if you really want to wash it out, uh, here's a suggestion. Oh, come on, don't fight me. <laughs> All right, make a disaster. Ugh. How about that? Uh, can we see that? Um, pick this up. I suggest you get one with a, a, a pair of them with a 30 inch stand or whatever on Amazon. Probably going to pay 20, 30 bucks for a pair of them. The light bulbs are CFLs, but they're 200 watt. They're extra big CFLs and they'll come with it. These light bulbs are 5,500 Kelvin or daylight bulbs. You can go buy regular bulbs at Home Depot. Uh, or wherever, make sure you get the, the daylight bulbs. They're 5,000 Kelvin, meaning they're more white uh, uh, and above, and that's what makes it look white and bright. So five or 6,000 Kelvin. These short stands, I don't really recommend because it does tend to make it hotter down low. If it was up higher, yeah, like that, then you can see it really washes out that background. Um, so we're getting into real nerdy video stuff there, but yeah, I keep a couple of those down there to wash out my background. Um, hang on, let me see what else we have here. Uh, you need lights to grow lights. Uh, yes, grow lights are up in the sunshine spectrum, um, but they tend to be more expensive than just daylight bulbs. Uh, fluorescent daylight bulbs are awesome. You just get like a shop light, one of those tube lights. And you can lay that on the ground behind you, shining up on your projector screen or your green screen or your backdrop, and, and away you go. Now you've got, and by the way, these projector screens, the coolest thing, uh, uh, I've always thought about setting up one of my kids or somebody, one of you needs to do this business. You buy these things in bulk, you're gonna pick them up for 40 or 50 bucks. Uh, uh, and then you just take them down to a t-shirt screen printer, uh, a sign printer, um, and you have your logo put on it so that when you pull it down, you've got your whole logo backdrop with the white screen. But if you take your projector screen down to a sign shop or a t-shirt shop and you can call them and ask, but they can either screen print or they'll print the vinyl stick on and stick it on there. Now you've got your up and down backdrop, professional backdrop. Um, uh, uh, let's see more questions uh, I think he said elance.com yes I did uh, odesk is another one sg.surfstat uh, blah 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 uh, oh any cool software to edit videos um, guys you gotta check out my YouTube uh, um, tutorials and trainings um, you can do just freaking about everything on YouTube now it's it's so unbelievable uh, yes I do have video editing software. No, I never really use it. I use Camtasia a lot. Here, take a peek. Uh, here is a YouTube training video. When I do screen share videos, I like to use Camtasia because it'll put me in, look, I see myself in a cell phone. Um, and here's one that's getting ready to go up to you and it's talking about setting up your YouTube channel and the artwork and where to get it and all that kind of stuff. Camtasia. Camtasia costs money. If you want to do a free, there's Cam Studio, which is a free version. Um, and I edit all my videos on Camtasia. Uh, but honestly, YouTube is all you need. Uh, you can get by with that. Um, uh, and Fiverr. Fiverr is the other hot tip. Go get your intro stingers and things like that made at Fiverr. If you really want edits done, Fiverr. But if I upload automatically from, and I'm not worried about ranking quite often, so I don't name my video first. I'll upload straight to YouTube, and then when I'm on YouTube, I can go in there and I have my intro stinger saved. So I can, uh, here, let's just show you. I need to give long answers uh, uh, and wear you out, but see YouTube, you go into Creator Studio. When I go into Creator Studio, look at this. I take a stinger, and we have all sorts of stingers that everybody will be able to choose from. And I keep those saved as private items. Well, you can now drop that at the beginning of any video, cut out the ending in the beginning, you know, the little press in the button or whatever until you strike the pose. So I'll pick the in and the out point, I'll drop that stinger on the beginning and done, my video's done. And if you wanna make your video look prettier, 
all the little enhancement stuff is in there and it's easier to use than any editing software you're ever going to tap into. Uh, you can add text, you can change the tiles, you can do it all, watch all the little YouTube tutorials or come to one of the YouTube uh, uh, workshops and YouTube will get you by. Uh, I don't see any more questions. We did kind of get off topic here. Uh, yes, go out, look at things on authority marketing, decide to become an authority marketing person, get your questions, start answering. Don't worry about looking too good and sounding too good or being dumb. Just get them up. You can replace them later. Nobody's going to really dig through all of them. Start with the worst questions maybe, and then move to some of the better ones. So your first five are the ones that people won't watch as much, but they let you get warmed up and just do them back to back to back to back to back. Cause once you're on a roll, You'll find it, eh, it took me 13 takes to do my first video. And then I did my next 19 videos and 19 takes. That's what's going to happen to you. Uh, and then once you have them up, if you really want to get fancy and you really want to go big and you want to be a stud in your niche, uh, uh, I have a couple tips for you and we'll make these your parting gifts. Um, press release for your new video uh, or a new playlist on your channel. Uh, no, you're not going to get it picked up and well, sometimes you will, but it's huge, huge for rankings, huge for, uh, uh, traffic, but especially for just building your authority, uh, uh, making the videos and it doesn't work for normal SEO, but for your videos up on YouTube. Uh, and remember these all go on agent select websites automatically as well, but for your YouTube channel, I recommend either open PR is a free one um, uh, or online PR news uh, and you can jump up to the more expensive paid ones. I wouldn't worry about it, but try it every now and then. Putting out a press release around one of them that's pretty good. Uh, if you don't know how to write a press release, they all have tutorials. If you still don't know how to do it, Fiverr.com. Find somebody for five or 10 bucks. They'll write you a press release and submit it for you. Uh, and now you're gonna blow up. And so here's your final tip. This is cheating. I swear it is, but it's, it's not illegal. It's not unethical. It's just damn. Uh, um, go out to a, a site like Instant Authority Marketing. Instant Authority Marketing. And, uh, and don't do this day one. Wait until you got your website up and you're really rocking it. And for 500 bucks, They'll do the press releases and the videos and things for you and they'll get them and they'll even give you all this stuff back as seen on CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox. And for the deluxe package, they'll even throw in CNN and a few others and they'll know you won't be on TV. You'll be on their website, but they'll get you on there, get you the legal right to even provide you the artwork so that you can go out and do like I was just showing you. Whoopsie as seen on um like i said it's kind of cheating but it's not illegal it's true it's ethical when you see people that have as seen on this is where it comes from uh so there's your insider uh, uh tip if you really want to uh all the business cards with as seen on that's authority marketing all right um uh oh where can we copy those stingers is your channel public yes uh, my channel is public. I don't think the stingers are, um, I'll give you a couple stinger tips. Um, um, oh, crud. If you're on an iPhone or an iPad, go look up video intro maker. Uh, and there we go. How about this? Let's see if we can see this. But, uh, Oh, did I miss it? Where's my finger? Oh, no, I pressed the button and we asked Siri for help. No, Siri, I don't want I'm help. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, you are. Um, well, Siri is stuck. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, uh, uh, but there's a little intro maker that works on iPhone or iPad that is just killer uh, at doing logo reveals. Um, yeah, don't save that project. 
and it is called, yeah, look at them all. Look at all those intros. Uh, and you can, there's a lot of other things and I love it for just making people a quick intro wham. And it's all template based. And if you want to do it online, Flix Press, F L I X P R E S S dot com is a quick, easy way. And you can put in your name, you can do a logo, you can do whatever. And Flix Press will get it for you. Intro Mate, I N T R O M A T E, Intro Mate for iOS will make you intros. Uh, I think it's $2. Uh, if you go on there and look at their templates and you don't want to spend the two bucks, feel free to send me an email. <laughs> I'll make you one. Um, but all you do is just type in color and boom, done. Um, uh, don't worry about the music when you're getting your intro made because when you go up on YouTube, there's 150,000 songs. And when you put your intro on there, all you do is you say, show me songs, only songs that fit. And it'll show you all the songs that perfectly fit your intro. Uh, uh, and you just sort through them right on YouTube and you're done. Um, and they got really good stuff. And then I suggest that once you get your intro up on YouTube, you can double, triple the speed. So great. I got one that's nine seconds and I got one that's four and a half and I got one that's three and I pick different sounds. Like on the one that's three, I'll pick a swoosh instead of music and the next one I'll have the full music, that kind of stuff. Um, but Flix Press or just Google Video Intro Maker. There's a bunch of quick ones. Or go to Fiverr and just have somebody make you one for five bucks. Um, or go to Intro Mate on iOS and make your own. Uh, and if you know a kid, anybody that's got a copy of Adobe Creative Suite or After Effects uh, and can use it, um, probably anybody under the age of 30, um, you can go out to... Um, uh, video hive or to uh, video hive or video blocks and they've got thousands of them pre-done that you can just put in your text um, but you got to have after effects to finish it off there you go any other questions Is your channel thanks you're welcome uh, uh, I love interaction and questions um, we do this all day long. Green screen, Elance. Any other questions, guys? Uh, you need to open up and say it, or it's been way too long, or <laughs> or you can type them. Nope. Thanks. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up for today. Uh, hope to see you guys again.